Welcome to Naples. Here we are, the capital of Il Mezzogiorno, one of the most famous cities in the world and one of the most notorious too. We see a city of arts built on layers and layers of cultures since thousands of years. We will experience the city as theatre, where public life is like in a play. And its stage, the narrow streets, neglected courtyards and brittle balconies. We discover the history of rebellion and feel the omnipresence of resistance rooted in the consciousness of never-ending occupation. We put a spotlight on the powerful yet dark side of family business called the Camorra. And we explore the multitude of possibilities this city provides. It's quite a laboratory of Europe's future, and I mean it. So join us on a journey through a city without equals. We are here in the Quarter Sanita to meet Gert Hage. He's a Dutch journalist living in Naples and he knows a lot of its secrets. So I think you know the secrets of the city. No, no one knows the secrets of the city. It, I mean, it's, it's like Malaparte, the famous Italian writer, already said it's the most mysterious city of the world. And is it true? It's true. Yeah. It's a poor city. It's a very poor city. I don't know exactly how poor, but it's really poor. And I think the, the, I call it in my book, it's the nicest and ugliest city of, it, uh, of Italy. And the, 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 the most, the worst part is the, not only the Camorra, but I think that maybe even 50 or 60 percent of the youth jobless. Jobless. I mean, yeah. yeah. Which is horrible for a city because yes. or they started to be part of the Camorra to earn some money, or the people who are who have the capacity they go to the north. If you ask, uh, I had a, uh, I did some lessons and then I asked to <coughs> a student from 18, 90 years old, what do you want to do in your life? And then they looked at you and they said, I want to work. In 1923, Benedetto Croce published an essay summarizing the history of Neapolitan anarchy. And his headline became legend. Un paradiso abitato da diavoli. A paradise inhabited by devils. Indeed, Naples has a story of permanent resistance against foreign oppressors. And yes, there were a lot. Beginning with the ancient Greeks naming this place the Neapolis, the new city. The people here see themselves as victims of a permanent foreign oppression, starting with the Greeks, followed by the Romans, the Normans, the Frenchmen, the Spaniards, and today, Italians. Against all these occupants, the Neapolitans were resisting in an anarchic way. But on three very important occasions, anarchy turns into revolution. First takes part here in the Spanish Quarter, the revolt against the Spanish House of Habsburg in 1647 was led by the fisherman Mazaniello and turns into a massacre with all the revolutionaries killed. Next was the so-called Repubblica Partenopea in 1799, appointing poets and idealists as politicians which sadly totally went haywire. And there were the famous four days of Naples in 1943. The uprising of the townsfolk and resistance 
against occupying German forces. Finally, this was a successful one. Despite poor planning and limited arms, the four days of Naples disrupted German plans of mass deportations and large-scale destructions in the region. It might be somewhat unexpected that a very old and very Catholic city is also a place for gender diversity and tolerance existing since centuries. But here they are, the famous Feminelli, gay and transgender males dressed as women, are an accepted part of the Neapolitan society. And today, the gay, lesbian and transgender community of Naples is the largest all over Europe. Il femminile è la storia di Napoli. Cioè è sempre stata. Era la figura di un uomo, però molto affeminato. Sì. Erano delle figure molto amate dalla comunità locale. Eh, non solo perché portavano fortuna, facevano le tombole, quindi davano i numeri, ma avevano cura dei bambini, avevano una funzione educativa. Sì. Eh, le, le, le mamme quando andavano a lavorare lasciavano i figli ai femminelli. E femmine la notte era una canzone. Era, era una una canzone. canzone. Una canzone. E femmine la notte. Noi siamo e femmine in notte dei moviziette ci fanno così. Noi siamo le più pagate perché rindoliette e facciamo pazzi. Noi siamo e femmine in notte che quando a mattina ci fanno a stipa. Perché se mette in scuola che poi si incontra se potesse chiamare. Praticamente questa canzone significa che anche l'uomo sposato veniva con noi per farsi passare i pizzetti, diciamo. E poi la mattina se ci incontravamo per strada non ci conoscevano. E da qui poi il femminello man mano è andato a finire. Mm -hmm. Ci sono i gay, ci sono i transessuali, perché ormai la, la storia va avanti, la nuova sì. generazione cresce. La mia storia non è che è stata facile. Per diventare transessuale a Napoli è stato un po' difficile. Invece oggi si è normalizzato perché lavoro, perché sono una, una persona sofferente che è riuscita a lavorare, a farsi accettare nella società. Io non soffro per me, soffro per altre trans che fanno perché non, non ci danno un lavoro, non danno un lavoro, non è facile dare un lavoro a una come me, perché ci sono delle persone che oggi sono anche partite, stanno sottoterra, come si dice a Napoli, mm. perché le famiglie l'hanno cacciato di casa. Ricordo che era a pranzo uh, dell'11 settembre di quattro anni fa e c'era una puntata di un telefilm dove, dove c'era un attore trans, quindi un uomo F2M trans. Quando vedo questa persona uh, dico alla, alla mia famiglia uh, di avere attrazione verso le ragazze per cercare di aprire un attimino uh, un discorso più ampio. E mio padre mi chiede se effettivamente mi piacciono solo le donne o Uh, mi fa proprio una domanda specifica o sei come questo attore uh, e ovviamente io rispondo sì e purtroppo uh, la reazione immediata è stata quella di, uh, di prepararmi le cose mio padre mio padre si, si alza va nella mia camera wow. e mi dice vai via le persone trans e le persone omosessuali vivono ormai uh, più tranquillamente la città di Napoli. Ci sono anche casi difficili, è ovvio che uh, Napoli può essere considerata come una grande madre, no? ma anche una matrigna. Uh, può essere considerata felice perché accogliente, ma anche infelice quando purtroppo per una cultura uh, della marginalità molte persone rimangono ancora su marciapiede esistenziale. Quindi eh, è vero che abbiamo fatto tanto su un piano politico, è vero che abbiamo fatto tanto noi come attivisti e come volontari insieme ad un'amministrazione illuminata, ma è anche vero che tutto va ancora fatto perché c'è ancora tanta infelicità e, e tanta marginalità.
Sarah, what is this? Allora, questa è una cappella del Settecento e l'ho avuto dal Piemonte della Misericordia. Ho lottato, ho fatto una battaglia per il quartiere per farmi accettare perché non era facile. È la prima cappella che danno a una transessuale in cui sono io che devo gestirla con i bambini del quartiere perché in questo quartiere ci sono ancora dei bambini che hanno il papà in carcere, il papà drogato e sono molto felice, sono veramente felice di, 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 di portare uh, una voce per le mie amiche transessuali, gay, lesbiche, è una diventa una società, una cooperativa in cui mi soddisfa, sono totalmente felice per questa cosa. Can you see something what is maybe positive? Can can we learn something or is something totally different? Now it's really touching for me it was to see in, in, how in my vehicle, which is a small street, there live three or four immigrants in quite a bad situation. And every morning my neighbors bring them coffee or a tella or a baba or something to eat. I mean, you can imagine if you have in a very poor city like Naples, with 10,000 immigrants coming in the city who had to find something to survive. And there's no revolution. I mean, if, if one tenth, one hundred, one thousand of that immigrants came to Amsterdam or Utrecht or Berlin or to... I mean, you can't imagine what would happen. No? I mean, there will be a revolt. And here, I mean, it's, it's, it's going... So, so everything is mixing in. Mixing in. It seems a kind of solidarity between poor people. If you have nothing, it's easy to share. It's easy to share nothing. It's more easy to share nothing than to share wealth. Napoli è la città del sole, della solarità, della gioia. È innanzitutto la città dell'accoglienza in cui tutti si mescolano, tutti diventano un'unica cosa. Ci si aiuta, ci si abbraccia, ci si sorride. È um, un accompagnamento costante all'altro. È una città anche molto difficile ma è calda, Napoli è molto calda. Each famous Italian town has its own character, at least in traditional commedia dell'arte. In Bologna it is the corrupted and arrogant dottore. In Venice we see the rich, ugly, Pantalone and in Naples we have Allegria. Puccinella. He wears a white dress, a black mask, he has a humpback, and his name means something like little chicken. <laughs> Shut up! So His voice sounds somewhat like the Donald Duck of Renaissance Theatre. He is a brutal and mean character, clever in a way, but also dangerous. You should never trust him at all. thing seems to be real. It's not a folkloristic thing that one can think. It's not at all folkloristic. It's more than a movie. Yeah. No, no, it's um, I think it's one of the, it's a big criminal organization, like the Mafia or the Drangheta, the yeah. two biggest organizations. Yes. Drangheta may be the biggest in the world, but it's very different. I mean, <coughs> the Drangata is something that has its roots in the mountains, they're stubborn, they are silent. And uh, the Camorra is a perfect reflection of the city. It's loud, it's noisy, it's chaotic, unorganized. I mean, there are maybe, maybe 120 different Camorra clans, 
in and around the city. And they all control their area, economically and also socially. But like to say, bit, bit like in Naples, they wake up and see, okay, we see what happened today. And then sometimes they collaborate together because it's like the Habsburgers, no? They sometimes they marry to each other just to expand their area. And sometimes, and then and the other day they fight each other. Then, but nobody is complaining about it because they get them work. I mean, if there is no work. Once, and it's already in the 50s or the 60s, they called the Camorra the Fiat of the South. Because it gives work to thousands, ten thousands of people of work who are dependent on the, on the, on the, on the money of the Camorra. We now gonna meet Cristina Donna Dio, the most famous actress in Naples these days. She is Chanel in Roberto Saviano's television series Gomorra and I definitely have to buy some flowers. Oh. Hi, Christine. Thomas. Hi. Thank you, Thomas. So beautiful. Wow. <laughs> I love the show, but I think maybe are you frustrated to be too connected with Chanel or no? It's you know, much? it's 40 uh, years and more that I am an actress. It was a difficult way to yes. to be Chanel because I can say I can act Chanel. I, yeah. It's not correct to say I can act Chanel. I, I have to be Chanel. It, this is a very uh, close to uh, the soul of Naples, because I think uh, Naples is a, a soul uh, just cut in two parts, a dark side and the light side. If you go in the light side, sometimes uh, uh, you find that the stereotype, Pulcinella in the, in the, in the wrong way, spaghetti, uh, tarantella, and in the dark side, you can find the real soul of this town. We born, we Neapolitan, we born from the, the ancient Greek, and then after the Greece and the Roman and the, and the, the Spanish. So we had a lot of uh, culture inside, yes. and so we can we can bring these uh, different cultures. In, uh, in inside of everybody of us. Yes. The German philosopher Walter yeah. Benjamin I wrote, yes, he wrote that Naples is also theater. Yeah, this sure. city is theater. Is he right? Uh, yes, um, uh, absolutely. Uh, we live on stage. Uh, everything is on stage. You, ca you can look uh, uh, to your uh, left or right yeah. and, so, and you can find the theater. But because uh, um, the real meaning of theater is not something that makes you laugh, no? Yes. It's something that makes you think, that makes you connect with the, with the deeper part of your soul. Okay. In this way, uh, we are too much. But uh, when we are too much, uh, we are living something, we are acting uh, something very, 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 deep of our soul. We, we need to, to act, we need to have ah, gestures yes, and, and movies. Yes, and the music and the face. Of yes, if someone is not treated very well, maybe for years or centuries and centuries, he has to show up and say, here I am, listen, That's it. see. It's fighting for, uh, I have fight for saying, I am, <laughs> and this is Naples. This is Naples in the world. We are, we are, <laughs> and we are all, all. Everything. Yes. Everything. Yes. Uh, bad in the bad and in the, in the in the good times and the bad times. It's okay, but we are, <laughs> my friend. Sun went down on Naples, and we have to wrap up our short visit. Yes, we didn't see everything. 
Monte Vesuvio, the churches and processions, and all these fantastic pieces of art from Caravaggio to Artemisia Gentileschi. But of course, you have to come and see it for yourself. And we will discover more in Utrecht Festival of Early Music 2019. And if you are wondering what all this has to do with early music, let me tell you this, everything. Music is the emotional bridge from the past to our present day. Applied in the right sense, it opens doors to a better future. See you in Utrecht. And now for some pizza marinara. Hey,